Let us be in prayer. Gracious God, rescue me from me. Hide me behind your cross, that I may not stand in the way of your words being mediated to all of us. Now pour out your spirit upon us. Take our thoughts, take our emotions, take our actions, our very being, and make them acceptable in your sight. Plant in us your spirit of grace, of acceptance, of love. For you are our rock, our redeemer, our very life. Amen. It may not seem so, but Paul writing to the church in Philippi and the story of the wicked tenants are very much similar. And the tenants assume that because they had worked that what they had was theirs, even though they had signed a lease and knew better. But somehow they decided this is mine, and I don't have to share it with anybody. And by force of my own will and what I have done, I can take it from the owner. That was what it was about. We will kill the heir and we will make it our own. Paul knew a little bit about that. In Philippians, he talks about being a part of the chosen people and how in being a part of them he felt in the beginning that God owed him you know he said if anyone has reason to have confidence in the flesh, meaning in the systems that we have created to show who we are, you know, I have even more confidence. I'm a Jew's Jew. I'm a part of the tribe of Benjamin. Remember, Benjamin and Judah were the only two tribes when the split came that were there in Jerusalem, the home of God, <laughs> where the temple was, was located. And both parents was Jewish. You were Jewish if your mother was, but both of his parents were Jewish, so he was definitely a Jew. He was a Pharisee. He had studied at the feet of Gamaliel. He was a persecutor of the church. In other words, when God sent Jesus and the followers of Jesus, to collect the harvest. Paul was one of those who threw them out and was ready to kill them. And I think that that picture of both the tenants and of Paul 
who considered himself very religious, ought to give us pause and cause us to examine ourselves. Where in are we not producing the fruits and giving God the fruits that God is demanding of us? It is not just enough to be here on Sunday morning. It is not just enough to have a good time. And we say we're having a good time in the Lord. But what does that bring out in us and bring out in others? Do we really welcome people or have we, like Paul in the very beginning, fallen into an idea that we've got it down pat and anyone else who comes along they can't conform to us, then we'll get rid of them. You remember that Jesus got the Pharisees and the scribes angry with them because he quite often told them, you know, the prostitutes and the tax collectors and all these sinners are going into heaven before you. He didn't say they weren't going to heaven. He said, but all of them are going to be there ahead of you. Now, we are all good church folks. And and just hear Jesus saying to us, you know those addicts and those prostitutes and those people with those short skirts are going to heaven before you? Think about it. Hear it in that way. Paul says sometimes we let things that we know get in the way of doing God's will. It's interesting that we love John 3.16, but we really don't hear it. God so loved the world. God loves everyone. Didn't say God. And we tend to sort of frame it in our minds and in our hearts that God was just sort of choosing our group. And Paul said, you know, once I met Jesus, once I understood what grace and love really is, those things became as garbage to me. He didn't, the word he used would be considered the S word, okay? <laughs> That's what he does in the Greek. See, that's what it became like to me. Because to know Christ, to know God's truth, is to truly understand what it is to be loved. And then it teaches us how to love others, how to welcome others. That is why, like I said, you know, I'm very proud of this congregation for having a recovery Sunday, for 
And I know that I saw it when I first came here. I saw that, that sometimes when recovery Sunday came, some people wouldn't come. And, and I thought, these are your children. <laughs> these are God's children. These are whom we are supposed to be seeking out and offering our love, our joy, our help, the peace of God, the grace of God, the truth of God, too. Jesus died so that we might have life, life abundant and life eternal, but that life is to be shared. It is to be shared among the congregation, but beyond the congregation. And we are to become so open and loving that people find it comforting to be in our presence and can speak the truth of who they are to us. Then the epistle to James, he said that we can't show favoritism. He said, my brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes come into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinction among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? We don't have fine rings and all of the other things that I'm thinking of. I'm talking about differences in who we are, our background, where we come from as individuals. Do we make distinctions there? And the question is there from James. Do you really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ when you do that? And the answer has to be no. If somebody is searching for God, if somebody is searching for that salvation that we claim, we need to be open enough to welcome them and to help them to connect to the God who is our salvation, who is the source of uh, our joy, who is supposed to be the one at the center of our lives. It was interesting because the young lady that revealed that she was a lesbian, it took a lot of courage for her to do that. And she must have thought about it because, you know, you're in a church, people that don't really know you and might react in a bad way. But she must have seen something in this congregation where she felt comfortable enough to say it. Now, Paul became the 13th apostle. And he went out and he welcomed everyone. He dropped the dietary laws of the Jews so that he could win people to Christ. 
And yet he says, I have not achieved all that I need to. I have not made this salvation totally my own. I'm still learning and I'm still growing. And that applies to all of us. We have not reached perfection yet, but we are going on to perfection. And I say to each and every one of you, continue to pray for one another. Continue to lift one another up that God might use us to be the type of community where everyone feels welcome. You know, and I guess I'll just say it. I hope at some point that we become a reconciling congregation where we say openly, we don't care who you are, where you come from, you are welcomed here. Because we are all God's children and we want you to join us on the journey going on to perfection for the high call of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen.